good afternoon, everyone, and good day to you, wherever you are joining us. Uh, we are all welcome to today's class. We'll be talking about um, homogeneous equation. We discussed homogeneous equation last time. Today we'll be talking about the exact solution and some other aspect of we'll continue from where we stop actually. And uh, for those of us, someone one of you asked that how do I know about that they are asking me to use homogeneous equation or homogeneous, yeah, it's a method of solving a problem. If you check some of your course material, page 28 to 39, there are conditions there that are listed in those pages. And those pages are the case one, and we have case one whereby we have when your y is greater than zero and uh, your k minus mi is also greater than zero. At that point, we have idea of what to use with the conditions are stated there. If you look at case two there, case two says when your y is less than zero, then your k minus my is also greater than zero, whereby because your m is greater than zero, in that case, all the equations that we define are above, you discover them, they are not equals to zero. If you look at case three, in that particular material, you discover that in case three, the f is whereby your y greater than zero. Remember, three cases are being stated here. The first case is greater than zero, and the second case is less than zero. And the third case is when by your k minus my also less than zero. Meanwhile, it simply means that your y is greater than k over m. But remember, your m is not zero because if your m is zero at that point, you have what we call undefined. So in this case, we run away from your k, your m equals to zero. And that is one. And number two is, for the homogeneous, we have what we call uh, a kind of, it must satisfy a certain condition. Maybe let me quickly, let me write them on the board so that we have idea of what we are talking about. Let me quickly share my screen. Can you see my screen, please? Can you see it? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So, so if you can see my screen, I will just quickly write some certain things here for you. They are all in your book, but it's better I put it here so that I can explain it once and for all. So when you look at the definition of the mean value, the definition says, for homogeneous, a real value function, a real value, function of of h of s comma y of two variable s and the y is called a homogeneous function. Of degree, please try and write it down, of degree n, where your n is a real 
number where your n is a real number. If we have, now let's look at, if we have h of our lambda x comma lambda y, which is the same thing as lambda raised to power n, h of s comma y. Now, for all, this is for all x comma y. And any constants lambda greater than zero. So what we are saying invariably is very simple. Lambda, what does lambda represent? For example, if you have, let me just give you this. If you have h of x comma y to be s raised to power three, plus two x square y, plus three x y squared, plus four y cubed. It's homogeneous of degree three. It's homogeneous of degree three. So in this case, your n, don't forget what they call your n. They said n, it said where n is a real number. Meaning that in this case now our lambda is raised to is 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 just like where you have h of lambda x comma lambda y is the same thing as lambda raised to power three h of x comma y. You see, lambda raised to power three, h of s comma y. Where do you see lambda raised to power three? The highest degree, uh, the highest power there is what? Is three so? Is what? Three. Three. Is three. So it gives us the privilege, and we know that our lambda, our n can be any function of what? Uh, our n, sorry, can be any real number. Where n is a real number. And we know three is that in that category. Am I communicating now? So at the end of the day, when we solve this particular function, we make it homogeneous. It said, by the time you differentiate it at the end of the day, your homogeneous function of degree zero, you introduce it to be equals to zero. And at the end of the day, you have your, uh, your solution, the way we solve all these problems. But let's look at the all this condition, please go out there and look into that page that I mentioned. You will see some of those conditions there. Is that okay? So let's continue. I gave us work to do last time. I said you should solve first one and the second one. I believe, how many of us make attempts? Only one person sent it to me early this morning. Only one person sent it to me early this morning. I just, I saw it, it's fine. But I don't know whether, because, I don't know whether others lay our hands on it, but I will still try to, let me quickly explain those questions to us. For those of us that make attempts, good luck. 
you know what? I always tell students, if you if you like, do it. If you like, don't do it. At least when it comes to exam period, you will do it, right? Am I right? Okay, let's look at this question. The first question says, y prime equals to 2x exponential minus y over x plus y. Everything divided by x. 1 comma 0. 1 comma 0. So how do we solve this one? What comes to your mind? Anybody? We have the y, the x equals to, it's the same thing as 2x exponential minus y, x plus y divided by x. I can cross multiply. If I cross multiply, what do I have? I will have x dy equals to everything in bracket 2x exponential minus y over x plus y dx. So the next thing I need to do is I know my dv at uh, the y. Remember, this is still homogeneous. Let's y equals to vx and our dy is equal to because we have the y here it's easier for us to use the y now our dy is equal to what x dv plus v dx that is where you differentiate y then let's substitute Uh, y and dy inside our, let's call this one equation one. Then equation one becomes x in bracket s dv plus v dx equals to 2x exponential minus what is y? Y is what? Vs Vx. Vx, right? Remember, x is there over x. Do you agree with me? Yes. Plus Vx dx. I just substitute said my v and my y and my dy into the function. So what do I have? At the end of the day, some we cancel, right? So we have this one to be. I can say this one go with this. So I have x in bracket x dv plus v dx. Something is common here. What is common? S is common. I have two exponential minus v plus v, the x. So the s can cancel out. So I have what? x dv plus v dx equals to two exponential minus v plus v. Or I can open the bracket with dx instead. 2 exponential, min exponential minus v dx plus v dx. So, in this case now, some things we cancel out. You agree with me that v dx can go with v dx by the time you take them to the other side. Let's do it together. X dv equals to 2 exponential minus v dx plus v dx. Take this one to the other side, minus v dx. So automatically, this go with this. 
So the next thing is we have S dV equals to two exponential minus V dx. So I need to separate them. Let V go to V, let S goes to X. Who can tell us what do we need to use? We can divide both sides by, by 2x exponential minus v. So it's going to be x dv over 2x exponential minus v equals to 2 exponential minus v divided by 2x exponential minus v dx. This go with this. This go with this. Then, so this go with this. So we are, here we have dv, 2 exponential minus v equals 1 over x, the x. So for those of us that solve it, you discover that you have something similar. Then we have this one to be 1 all over 2 exponential minus v dv equals to integral of 1 all over x dx. I can separate 1 over 2 out. I have 1 over 2 integral 1 all over exponential minus v dv, which is integral of 1 all over x dx. So at the end, you agree with me, and then when you have 1 over x minus 1, is the same thing as x. Do you agree? Hello? Are we there? Yes, we are there, sir. Do you agree with what I gave you? Partially. Do you agree? Yes, sir. So, it's the same thing as when you have 1 over 2 integral of exponential v dv equals to integral of 1 over x dx. So what do we have? When you differentiate, uh, when you integrate exponential v, what do you have? Is exponential v, again, okay, equals to lean modulus of x plus c. I know my v to be what? Remember your y equals to vx. Then what is v? v will be what? y over x. So substitute v here. 1 over 2 exponential y over x equals to lean x plus c. So if you multiply through by two, what do you have? Multiply through by two, we have exponential y over x equals to two lin x plus two c. And we know two c is the same thing as c, right? So, in this case now, we have our condition says S. So, we can 
resolve this one first by say exponential. If you really, if you want to bring this down, we don't, okay, let's just do it this way. Y over X equals to, take this one up, you have it to be what? Lin X squared plus C. You have your Y to be equals to zero and S equals to one, according to this one comma zero. So if you substitute zero here, what do you have? You have exponential zero equals to lean one square plus C. So here we have one, exponential zero is one, equals to zero plus C. Therefore, our C is equals to one, which implies that exponential y over x is equals to ln x squared plus one. How many of us got this one? It as if majority of us we are not in class today. That's good. Are we all there? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. I did not get the right answer, but you have idea now. Wadarich, why is it that you are the only one? You have three, uh, you have three devices. Can you omit one? Or should I remove you from the platform? Okay, okay. Abigail. Will you be able to do something? No, sir. Why? You are busy. Let's look at the second. Uh... Okay, only. So the second question says, so let's look at the second question. It says, solve the y dx equals to two y squared plus three y over f squared. So, what we need to do is, first of all, resolve the matter here. The solution will be the y, the x, equals to 2y squared over x squared plus 3xy over x squared. Let's first of all resolve this one. This go with this. So you have it to be the y, the x, equals to 2y squared x squared plus three y over x, which is same thing as two into y over x all squared plus three into y over x. Remember we know our V, let V equals to y over x, which implies that our y is equals to vx, right? So in this case now,
we can as well let's substitute first if you substitute this one what do you have if you substitute here don't forget the y the x so the y the x will be equals to 2 into what v squared plus 3 into v but we need to transform the y the x also we need to transform the y the x also so if i have my v if I have my y to be vx, what's going to be the y, the x? The y, the x will be, differentiate this, hold this one constant, or hold x constant, differentiate the v, the x, then plus differentiate this one with respect to x. What do I have? I will have v, because s returns to one. And one multiplied by constant will be constant. So anywhere I see the y, the x, I will substitute this. So I will have x dv dx plus v equals to 2v squared plus 3v. So what do we have? So we have this. I think we can also proceed from here. Let's call this e equation. Now we can resolve this one by separating them. Let V go to V, let S goes to S. That's major things you need to do in this case. I can take my v to the other side by saying the v dx is equals to 2v squared plus 3v minus v. So x dv dx will be equals to 2v squared 3v minus v will give you what? 2v. Then v is common to them. I have the V, the X, to be equals to V is common. I have 2V minus 2, uh, plus 2 rather. Or we can say that we can take 2V out. Let's just use 2V out. It's still going to be the same. Let's say 2V is common. 2V is common. I have V here plus 1. Now that I have 2V plus 1, and I, the other side, I have the V, the X. So what do I do? So I need to divide both sides by, divide both sides. By SV into V plus one. Divide both sides by SV into V plus one, but we can take, we can cross multiply by taking the x to the other side. I said x dv over sv into v plus one equals to two v, v plus one, the s over sv, v plus one. So X will go here, this will go, V will go here, and this also will go here. At the end of the day, I have the V over V plus one equals to two over X, the X. So that was what I would have. So in this case now, we can easily, so here we still have V, sorry. 
in this case now we can easily do what? Integrate both sides. But it will lead us into, we have to split them some, but let's look at how do we split them. It's going to be one all over V into V plus one. Integral dV equals to two is here, one all over X the X. So this is left hand side. This is right hand side. Let's deal with left hand side first. If you do left hand side, we use partial derivative, partial fraction to solve it. It will lead us to partial fraction. And uh, it's very simple. All we need to do is just to refresh our set memory from partial fraction using partial fraction for left hand side. So what do we have? It's going to be integral of one all over V. At the end of the day, you have minus one all over V plus one dV, which is equals to. So after we use partial fraction, that's why we gain, we have this, we have this one, which is equals to two integral of one over X, the X. So, so what do we have here? Let's integrate them one after the other. One all over V dV minus integral of one all over V plus one dV equals to two integral of one over X the X. So when you integrate this, you have lean V, absolute value of this minus lean absolute value of V plus one equals to two lean X plus, plus C. We can also remember that this, when according to law of indices, what do we have? Law of indices uh, or law of log reading tell us that lean, we can say V all over V plus one, all together equals to when you find the law of the same thing here this one will give you lean s squared plus lean c then i can match the two together by saying lean v plus v plus one equals to lean c s squared So the link can cancel the link. So we cancel them. So we have V into V plus one equals to C S squared. But don't forget that in this case, you have to substitute your V back into the old thing. Remember your V is equals to Y over X. Substitute it back. What do you have? You have it to be y over x over y over x plus one equals to c s squared. When you resolve it thoroughly, you have something very close to y. So your y will be in this form, y equals to s into CS minus one all over two. So when you resolve this one, this is what we have. Any question, please? So let's quickly solve today's question. We'll just solve one or two things from there. And uh, then we proceed. So let's look at it. Today we, let's look at this next topic, exact. 
exact first order differential equation first order differential equation so how do we do this is that a differential equation that is m of s comma y dx plus n of s comma y dy equals to zero so if you are for example, if our f of x comma y, if you have it in this format, and they ask us to differentiate this one, what we have? Our df in partial derivative now. Remember, because they have two variable x and y. So we use partial derivative equals to the f. over dx, d dx, plus the f over the y, the y. So the same thing applicable here, remember the general solution say m of x of comma y dx. So it simply means that our m of s comma y in this case is the f dx, and uh, n of s comma y is the same thing as the f dy. So m of x m of s comma y the s plus n of s comma y the y equals to zero. We call this one equation one. Is called an exact solution or exact differential. Sorry exact differential if there exist a function f of s comma y of two variable of two real variable such that the expression equals the total derivative differential. the f the same thing we know in calculus that we i i explain how oh. so now let's look at this uh let's look at the uh, a kind of theorem that make us believe and we we'll solve one or two examples before we call it a day The F, we know 
that from the calculus that the F is the same thing as di L, the X, the X, plus the F, the Y, the Y. Plus, if equation one is exact, if equation one is exact, then This following theorem we hold. That is the differential equation m s comma y the x plus m s comma y the y equals to zero is an exact equation if and only if the m the x equals to the n the x. So if this occur, this is where I'm coming. If this occur, then we can conclude that we have exact solution. So let's look at the example. But I don't need to prove this one, but let's just look at example. Example one. So solve three x squared y plus two the x plus x cubed plus y dy equals to zero. We are asked to solve this one equals to zero. So for us to solve this one, solution, let m equals to 3x squared y plus 2, and let your n equals to s cubed plus y. So don't forget where we are coming from, that m, the x, must equal to the n, the x. So that, how do we represent them? Let's say the M, the Y, remember from when we differentiate this one, the F, the Y, we have. So for us to differentiate this, what do we have? The M, the Y is equal to what? Who can tell us, please? Hello, guys. Are we tired? Um, would that be three x y plus two? No, over... you will not have okay. it. You will not have plus two. Remember, two is just okay. a constant. But it's good when you differentiate. Differentiate this. This is what I want you to differentiate with respect to y. So when you differentiate this, you have three x squared because three x it will be a constant with three. When you differentiate y, you'll be one. One multiplied by everything, three x squared. This one will be zero because it's a constant. No variable attached to it. It will be zero. So now, the same thing we're going to do, the n, the x. Let's differentiate the n, the x.
differentiate the n the x. What do you have? X cube as f. You differentiate x. That's just the meaning. The y will be zero. Y will be zero at that point because y is a constant. Y is a constant, you differentiate it. So at the end of the day, you have three x squared. Since the n the y is equals is equals to the n the x. It is exact. Differential. This, we have exact differential, differential equation now. So, so us, we can now solve it because we've not, we just first of all check whether is an exact differential equation. Now that we establish an exact differential equation, we can now go ahead by saying, we will now say that thus, there exists a function f of x comma y such that such that the f the x is equals to three x squared. We we'll go back to our equation plus two. This is equation one. Then the f the y equals to S cube plus Y equation two. So we need to now integrate them. When you integrate both sides, what do you have at the end of the day? You know, first thing we first of all check, and those steps will be listed. We have seven steps to be listed. I will give us the steps after this solving. So in this case now that we get to this point, we need to integrate. We said, okay, let us integrate equation one with respect to x. So equation one with respect to x will be what? Integral of the f, the, the x, the x will be what? Integral of three x squared y plus two the x. So we integrate it with respect to x. So when you integrate this with respect to x, what do you have? So remember, when you integrate this one, you have f here, will be. Now, x is here, let's integrate. Three x cubed over three, y, plus two x. So at this point, remember we are integrating with respect to x, then we have plus, h of y here. I will explain those ones when I listed, when I will list each of the steps. Then f2, then our f will now be, these three will cancel this, we have x cube y plus two x plus h We we'll call this one, we can call this one equation three. 
Then for our equation three, we have this. So now let's do the F dy. The F dy, let's look at it. The F dy, which is your equation two, is the same thing as, now all you need to do is, we have to also differentiate the y there. So what do we have? We have S cube plus H of Y. So we call this one equation four because what we do is our DF here, we differentiate the F with our equation three, we differentiate it with respect to y. That's what we did. Let me write it there. Differentiate. Equation three with respect to y. So when you differentiate equation three with respect to y, it will give us this equation four, because when you differentiate y here, y will be one at this point. I One multiplied by x raised to power three is x raised to power three. x will be zero, two x will be zero, well, and this one will be h prime. Now that we have this, we can now compare, now compare, comparing equation four, and equation two, what do you have? When you compare equation four and equation two together, what do you have? We know equation four is S cubed plus H prime of Y. Equation two will be equals to H S3, S raised to power three plus Y. So X, cube we go, it will remain h prime of y equals to y. So h prime of y equals to y. Now integrate both sides. We have when we integrate both sides, we have integral of h prime of y equals to integral of y dy. So in this case, when you integrate and uh, differentiation is anti-differentiation, so we have it to be h of y equals to differentiate y, integrate y rather, we have y squared over two plus c. y squared over two plus c. Now that we know the age, equation three, we go back to our equation three. Here is equation three where we declare our h of y. We declare our h of y from here. So we can see equation three would be what now? Equation three becomes f of s comma y equals to s cube y plus 2x plus y squared over 2 plus c. So that is what they ask us to do. But before then, I think I will need to quickly list some steps. Let's look at the steps that we just did now. Steps. Step one. From one. Step one, we check Check the M, the F, the Y equals to the N, the X. That is our exact differential equation. That is, check your different exact differential equation. If your the M, the Y is equals to the N, the X, then you can continue. If not, you can continue. If you use other method for that. That's why I said you can't continue with this method. Now let's look at two. 
M. Step two will be M is our DF, DX, which lead us to F of S comma Y is equals to integral of M, DX, plus G or H of Y, depending on what you use. G or H of Y. Then also we do this, the N, the F, the Y, leads to F of S comma Y equals to integral of N, the Y plus H of X. So if you do the N, that is, you do the M first, you add H of a, 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 G of Y, or you do the A N second, you do the H of X. So step three is, on step three, we have to find, excuse me, the F, the Y, to be equals to A, So then you will have uh, G prime of Y. Then when you find the F, the X also, which is uh, your M, you will also have H prime of X. Then the next thing, the next step, which is step four, is you solve for G prime of Y or G H prime of X, depending on what you are working on. Step five, you find G of Y or H of X. At that point, when you're finding G of Y, it simply means G of Y is equals to integral of G prime of Y, the Y, and H of X, H prime of X, the X. So, after you've done that, then you can now replace step six. Replace G of Y or H of X in two. Remember you have in equation two, you already have step two rather, you have H of Y, G of Y, replace them. The way we did the other time, you replace them. Then in seven, you can now find your S comma Y, which is equal to whatever, whatever you have plus or minus C. Then step eight, you solve initial, in case you have initial value problem, that is where you get, you are given you if given, you can solve it. That is initial value problem is, uh, initial uh, value is when you have a kind of boundary. They give you value for X, they give you value for Y, substitute it in order to get your C. Any question? If you check your books, everything we are doing, they are all in your book but it's a bit complicated. That's why we have to do it one after the other. I'm just trying to take my time to explain to you guys so that when you are studying, if you check page 47, what we are doing is there in your material. They are all there, but it's a bit scattered or thereabouts. But if you follow all these steps, you will enjoy what is in the book. Uh, because of our time, I, our time is fast spent, but 
can I quickly, for those of us, yes, James? Uh, um, sir, please, is there any Facebook you can recommend for this um, course aside from this material? Uh, we have a lot of textbook online. Just type it there, different elementary differential equation textbook. You will see a lot. A lot. So when I mean a lot, you will see a lot. But let me just, but you can, for those of us that in mathematics, it is better you also go for that. You can, you can read more. But for those of us that we are just doing it as a borrow course, it might be the little knowledge that you will need there. But if you want to learn more, you can download and download as many books as possible online. But before then, let me just use all these steps that I gave you now to explain this question. Let me give you one question. The question says 4x minus y dx plus 6y minus x dy equals to 0. What is my m in this case? Yes, anybody? m is 4x minus y. m is equal to 4x minus y. Thank you. What is my n? 6y minus x. Good. But don't forget, we are to differentiate this. The m with respect to, forget about, not this one now, but you have to be careful where you are dealing with, because m comes first, s follows. Then the m, the y, all the m must be with respect to y. When you differentiate the m, the y, what do you have? Yes. 4x. No. No. And 4x. See, you can only say 4x if you have, for example, if you have 4xy, we can say 4x. Because y will have been 1. But in this case, we only have 4x. 4x in this case is 0. Remember, we are using partial derivative. So this one will turn to 0 automatically because there's no y there. But when you differentiate the one with y, you have minus one. Do you agree with me? So it's going to be zero minus one. That's the answer. But when you differentiate it, okay, what is this answer now? Minus six uh, y minus x. What's the answer when you differentiate it? Minus one. Minus one, correct. It's going to be minus one because y there will be zero. Automatically, it will be zero. So the equ equation, therefore, the equation is what exact? Exact differential equation. That's what we have. Now, go to steps. Let's look at the steps. The first step is to check. We've done that now. The m, the y is equal to the n, the y. We've checked that. So the next step is to do what? Look at your book. It's in your notes. You just copy it. The next step will be what? Let's do it together. Second step. Step two, rather. Please, I'm late for the next class. Let's let's just quickly round up. You are to integrate four x minus y. The x. So, if you want to integrate this, what do we have? With respect to x, we have four x squared over two. Minus x y. Don't forget, oh, this is integration. It's not differentiation. Plus g of y. You can use h of y, g of y, anything you like. So my f of x 
comma y will be 2x squared minus xy plus g of y. I can call this one equation one. Then if I differentiate equation one, differentiate equation one now. You get it, differentiate f dy. With respect to y, what do I have? This returns to zero, you know that. This returns to minus x plus g prime of y. Then at this point, I will need to compare. This is the point whereby you compare the two equation together. That is, remember, we have equation here. Oh, I didn't write, okay, I didn't write it down like that. I can call this one equation one, let's say equation two. Then call this one equation three. When you differentiate equation three, you have this. You have equation four. Then compare equation two, which is this, with, with equation four. What do we have? So we have it to be minus x plus g prime of y equals to 6x or 6y rather minus x. So you discover that our g prime of y will be equals to 6y minus s plus x. So before you know it, our g prime of y is equal to 6y. Then we can integrate both sides. Let's go to the equation and let's go to the steps. So look at step five now. Step five said, after you find it, integrate this or this, depending on the one you're using. So I'll integrate this one now. What do I have? If I integrate, so I have g of y equals to 6y squared over 2 plus c. So you have g of y to be equal to 3y squared plus c. You can call it c1 or c2. c is the c. So I know everything becomes what? I have this one down. I can substitute this one back to my equation. Equation 3. So I will just say, Equation three becomes what is equation three becomes? Let's see. We have two x squared. Let's say fs comma y equals to two s squared minus s y plus g of y. G of y it says what? Three y squared plus C. So, which implies we don't have any value for C. If you have any value for C, you can put it there. But since we don't have any value for C, C is C. So we can just say 2x squared minus xy plus 3y squared equals to C. So that's what it has us to do. So when you are given this kind of equation, I've already gave you the condition whereby you test. Go and look at the steps, please. All these steps matters. Once you look at the steps, then you can solve them. Any question? Mr. Wada, how are you?
Any question, guys? You're welcome. So let's try as much as possible, guys, to uh, take advantage of this video and uh, and sit down with it, go through it. Then you will see different examples in your course material. Unfortunately, majority of them are not. Uh, just try it out. Let me quickly give you. Let me share you. Let me give you why I move on. My next class starts in the next one minute. But look at this. Assignment. Do this. Can you see my screen? Sir, hold on. I'm just going to shout. So solve this assignment, follow the same method. Solve it. How do I know whether I got it right? But go on and solve it. Your H of X or whatever you use will give you. Just go and solve it first. Then don't let me give you. Let's see how you perform it. Then okay, guys. See you next class. See you next class. Come. Bye. Hey, thank you, sir. Thank you. You're always welcome. So, uh...